audience was exceedingly respectful. It was patient. I went on at some length. And so, as a rule, I'd like to give the first three questions to dissenters. If anybody, everyone was respectful here, so those who want to register a strong disagreement or a dissent from what I had to say, I, I think they should have the right to go first. So I disagree because I don't think Israel won this war. I don't think it was a victory for Israel. So that's the disagreement. I also think that organization that Mr. Finkelstein talked about lacked among North American academics. From Mr. Chomsky all the way to Judith Butler, all the way down to professors in UBC, they failed to come together. I don't have their emails. You guys share your email list. They failed to come together like the academics in England who finally, after three weeks, were able to put a beautiful letter together with hundreds of signatories. I called, I called Znet. I called all these institutions. I left messages to all these professors. Why aren't you guys organized? We are ready to organize too, and we're doing our best. But I think, I think it lacked. We lacked that North American academic coming together in a big list, of, like very basic stuff, and create support. Thank you. Um, well, I'm not an academic anymore. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if I ever was. Uh, I understand that there are people coming together to uh, make a, a statement on this. Uh, professors are coming together to make a statement on the subject. But you know, we shouldn't get too carried away with professors. Most of them are windbags. We all know that. And I, I, mean, uh, I want to be careful. I don't include the natural science, not natural sciences. They're smart. We, we also know that. I'm talking about those so-called social sciences, which are all stupid, and we all know that. Uh, but you know, it's our responsibility too, and it's our main responsibility. Uh, I don't know how many professors there are in this room, but there are a lot of people in the room, and uh, you have, we have to get organized. I first want to congratulate Dr. Lupin Deman for his great stance and um, uh, for this. Um, visit that he uh, made over here to um, help uh, lift the fog over the eyes of many people about the misconception about um, the Palestinian cause and um, the reality of the um, Israeli government. But um, there's a couple of quick points, sir, that regarding the main goal of why Israel went to Gaza, I agree 100% about the two things that you mentioned, but I, I, I do believe, as a Muslim, Arab from Egypt, that the main goal for Israel to enter Gaza was to crush an Islamic government because this war is a continuation of the war on terror, which George W. Bush actually called for in 2001, and the state of Israel is rallying and is, is known to be an ally to the U.S. government. So basically, um, the second point that I want to make here also very quick is that there's the reason why, why there's a, a war on the Islamic government is because the world's now becoming to understand really what Islam is all about. The world is turning to Islam. The world's finding out that Islam is a peaceful religion and it, and it, it has a solution to the world's problem. And that's what makes Israel and America in fear because Islam stands against tyranny, against treachery, against robbing people out of their own resources, against turning them into slaves, the world bank and so on and so forth, and that's the biggest fear to this government. Thank you very much. The problem is there's no evidence to support that claim. But allow me to finish, please. Uh, probably the most insightful speeches that were delivered during the massacre in Gaza were the ones on a nightly basis by uh, Secretary Gen the Secretary General of um, the Hezbollah, uh, Nasrallah. He was giving nightly speeches to commemorate Ashura. And it's worth it. It's worth everybody's time, I think, to listen to what he had to say. And he was very emphatic day in and day out on two points. He said, number one, this is not an Israeli war, he said. It's an American war. It's all about the American goal 
of trying to dominate the Middle East. And number two, he kept saying, it has nothing whatsoever to do with Islam. The U.S. doesn't care if you're Islamic, Christian, Buddhist, atheist, whateverist. They only care about one thing, whether you're willing to follow orders. If you're willing to follow orders, they like you, and if you're unwilling, they don't like you. That's the only criterion. Let's look at another example. They claim Ahmadinejad. He's so terrible. He's a Holocaust denier. What could be worse than that? Well, there happens to be another very famous Holocaust denier in the Middle East. This person actually wrote his doctoral dissertation denying the Nazi Holocaust. This person then was so pleased with his doctoral dissertation denying the Holocaust, he self-published it in Lebanon. And who is this person? His name is Dr. Mahmoud Abbas. Yes, America's favorite the head of the so-called Palestinian so-called authority. He's also a great intellectual. He got his doctorate denying the Nazi Holocaust. Does Israel care? Does the United States care? Of course not. Some of you don't understand why, because you haven't seen The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> if you've seen The Wizard of Oz, you'll know that there are good witches and bad witches. The good witch is the beautiful Glinda. And the bad witch, I forget her name all the time. And it's the same thing with Holocaust deniers. There are good Holocaust deniers like Mr. Abbas or Dr. Abbas. And there are bad ones like Mr. Ahmadinejad. And it's the same, there are good Muslims like the heads of Saudi Arabia, they're good Muslims. And then there are bad Muslims. There are bad Muslims like Mr. Nasrallah. He's an evil Muslim because he has this weird idea that it's the Arab people and Muslim people who should control the destiny of the Mu Muslim and Arab world. A very weird idea. You know, he's obviously evil. Uh, thank you, Dr. Finkelstein, for an insightful talk. Uh, I'm, I'm a dissenter, but a dissenter against the Canadian government and media, not against what they've been saying. So I don't know if that counts, but I, I'm glad you brought up the Canadian media. Uh, my name's Gordon Murray. I'm one of the, uh, the creators of a parody edition of the Vancouver Sun, which uh, satirized its pro-Israeli, anti-Palestinian bias. We put it out a year and a half ago, and we're now being sued by CanWest, which is Canada's largest media conglomerate, for putting out this parody. Um, so I, I'm, I'm really interested in your comments on the media. Um, I, just, I just wanted to uh, tell people that if they want to find out more about this case, which is a significant uh, attack on freedom of expression for all Canadians, uh, that they can go to the seriouslyfreespeech.ca website, and we have a forum coming up in uh, February 17th at uh, Harbour Centre. There's flyers for it outside. So that's the end of the ad. I just wanted to uh, ask you, Dr. Finkelstein, as, uh, as far as uh, strategies in, in dealing with the media, um, here in, in Canada, as you pointed out, it's, it's horrific. The, the Vancouver Sun, on the day after uh, Israel shelled the two UN schools and killed 42 uh, civilians, uh, the Vancouver Sun carried the story on page B6 with no header anywhere else in the paper, and the headline was, Pressure Grows for Ceasefire. That's how they. That's that's the. That's what we're up against in terms of public education in Canada, getting the word out about what's actually happening. 
so um, I, 